Behind me is the burial mound over the actual tomb of the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang. Who can imagine what riches may lie beneath that mound? Because in recent years, some amazing discoveries have been made just around here. Just over there, for example, was the pit in which the bronze chariot and horses were found. Just the other side, a big pit with life-size pottery figures of acrobats to entertain the emperor in the afterlife. And there was another pit with life-size pottery officials and another pit with suits of armour. So it stands to reason that there must be a wealth of material here just waiting to be discovered just a few metres beneath the surface of the ground. The first emperor's brutality is legendary. But the man of war also saw himself as a man of peace. He regularly toured his great empire, inscribing stones at majestic mountains that celebrated his achievements. He regulates the tasks according to the times. The various professions prosper and thrive. The black-haired are peaceful and tranquil and do not need to use weapons and armour. Joyously and merrily they receive their instructions and completely understand the rules and the models. But the first emperor was also a man who ultimately helped to create modern China. His imperious hand can still be felt today. So powerful was he that he created a system of government and administration that lasted for 2,000 years. In order to maintain order and unity in his sprawling empire, he standardized practical things like writing. And to simplify commerce and trading, he created uniform weights and measures and decreed that a single currency should always be used. Qin Shi Huang also built a network of highways between the cities and he transformed fragments of defensive walls into the Great Wall of China. But today, of course, most people's view of this extraordinary figure in Chinese history is all about this incredible buried army. It's been dubbed the eighth wonder of the world, and these terracotta warriors have become China's global ambassadors. It may be the huge scale of the first emperor's buried army that attracts attention, but I think people are fascinated by these faces. Everyone is different and they're exquisitely modeled. I think they probably had a whole set, a whole suite of heads, but they were then individually models. So everyone has a sense of personality. We get the feeling that we're looking at somebody who actually once existed. And that level of detail is then carried on right down the armour here with every rivet and every little tag holding each of the panels of the armour together. It is an extraordinary attention to detail that is, I think, absolutely fascinates people. The emperor must have established huge factories and production lines to create these thousands of life-sized figures. No one knows exactly where they were made, but as the clays vary slightly, they must have been made in a number of locations, but always within striking distance of the emperor's tomb. You know, down here in the pits with the emperor's guardian army, the first thing that struck me was I was walking along and I wasn't looking at them, I was looking up at them. These guardians are very, very big. They're great warriors. And of course, the other thing is, I walk along here, this face is different, this face is different. They must represent people from all parts of the empire at the time. And the other thing, of course, I look at this soldier here, this guardian, he's stoic, he's resolute. He's somebody who's going to guard the emperor forever. It's this attention to detail that gives each figure its own identity and personality. Not only do the warriors wear different uniforms according to their rank, they sport a myriad of hairstyles, headgear, clothing and shoes. Facial features have all been crafted individually. They may have been mass produced, but these warriors are finished as works of art. 
Of all the figures in the First Emperor's Buried Army, I think the kneeling bowman is the most fascinating. Firstly, the pose is so natural, but it's also the attention to detail, the beautiful hairstyle up here with the plaits and the ribbon in the hair, the armour with the ribbons holding the armour together, and you go down to the soles of the feet. Even the tread on the shoe is clearly shown.